We're gonna talk about something today that I wanted to clarify for a long time. What is the real reason that NASCARs do not sound like they used to 20 years ago or even 13 years ago? It has nothing to do with most of the reasons you see online. I've seen some pretty stupid stuff. It's carburetor versus fuel injection or the engines were different or blah, 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 blah. All the speculation as to why the sound is different. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about as far as the two different sounds because you may not even be aware of this, but once you hear them back to back, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The primary sound difference that I'll be talking about here is from restrictor plate tracks like Talladega, Daytona. That's the, the signature sound that I'm referring to. And it's not boom tubes either. I know what you're saying. Oh, it's the boom tubes, it's the boom tubes. It's part of it, but it's not the root of why they sound this way. So you can hear in the earlier clips that the cars have a much high pitch sound. It's a lot smoother. It sounds like they're turning really high RPM and that's not it either. Fun fact, believe it or not, the restrictor plate cars back then only turn, you know, 68 to 7,000 RPM around the track the whole race. It's not turning 10 grand like it sounds. There is a reason it sounds like that though. Also worth noting that the old IROC Firebirds had the same sound for the same reason. To dispel the boom tube as the reason for they sound like this, look at some pictures of these IROC cars down there at the bottom. It's not a boom tube, it's just oval cut tube. And now, let's look and compare the sound of the IROC cars to the old super speedway NASCARs. In a lot of ways, Jeff, these cars, Dave? cars are a lot like the Bush cars, aren't they? And guys, he was racing on a smaller car grader than the leader of his team. What I'm about to explain is the absolute truth as to why these things sound this way, and I have sources to back it up. Some may think the story starts here with this guy, Sterling Marlin, in 1994, but the real story starts with this guy, Boyd Butler, aka Dr. Gas. Before we really dig into it, I'm gonna really throw you for a loop. Here's a clip from this past year or two of Stuart Haas cars in the Xfinity series. They sound a lot like the old ones. <laughs> Dr. Gas invented the boom tube, but the boom tube is not the sole reason why those things sound that way, obviously because the IROC cars didn't have them. Neil's Bonnet car is upside down here in Talladega in 1993. It has boom tubes, and it doesn't sound like that, because that cool sound didn't start until Sterling Marlin in 94. Now this clip is from 95, but you get the point. The announcers talk about it. You hear him as he goes by? Yeah. That's a different sound than you're used to hearing with a, with a stock rate. This thing just sounds fast, doesn't it? It does sound fast. It sounds like it's got a turbocharger or something. Yeah. Now here's Clint Boyer's car upside down at the 2007 Daytona 500. You can see what he's got going on there. Now let's hear what it sounds like. Because I'm pretty sure he probably hit I just, I just what you said that it made me... <laughs> and his best finish at this track. So it's not the boom tube, it's not fuel injection, it's not time, it's not camera audio. The reason it's different is the freaking X pipe. That is it. It is amazing what a properly configured X pipe does and Dr. Gas invented that too. There's some old article online that talks about it said he had this kind of figured out and put an ad in a circle track magazine or something because he couldn't get a hold of anybody at a nascar team and somebody from morgan mcclure contacted him and said okay yeah we want to try this whatever they put it on a car and it made like four more horsepower at a restrictor plate track that was a ton and he ended up winning two races in a row like that it made a huge impact and then the IROC series, they contracted Dr. Gas to build the exhaust for them too, just because it sounded cool. I actually talked to the guy who owns Dr. Gas now. They still are in business. They still make these things. You can buy it from them. I'm gonna be using their stuff at my Monte Carlo, and I actually got into contact with them because of the experiment I did with my Escalade, which is pretty cool, 
just the X pipe because the IROC cars have an exhaust system that looks like this. There is no boom tube on the end. It's just the exhaust comes off the header, takes a hard 90 into the X and then shoots straight out, straight out with pipe. That's it. Now, I'm not really up to date on the current happenings of NASCAR. I don't actually watch it. I used to go to races all the time when I was little with my dad. But the real reason I'm making this video is because I'm just an exhaust sound nerd. I just geek out on this stuff. And man, when I hear those IROC cars from that camera at the beginning of turn three at the end of the back stretch of Daytona, I've watched entire IROC races just because I like the way they sound. Like when that, that camera angle comes in and they pan down the back stretch like that, I just get chills every single time. I'm a little bit obsessed with that sound and the science behind it is just so dang cool that I have taken the quest to duplicate that in my own personal cars, which is why I have dug so deeply into this. I just think it's cool. I'm just a nerd about that. If you're an exhaust nerd and you've never seen my channel before, welcome to the Thunderdome. This is where you want to be because I have actually got some pretty cool stuff in the works as far as duplicating and digging out that sound on my own stuff, mostly my Monte Carlo, but we did a little bit of experimenting on my Escalade. It's not the same because my Escalade is turbocharged and there's like probably seven feet of pipe before the X pipe actually happens. Oddly enough, it still sounds very, very similar to this. some clips of with this X pipe and with no exhaust at all and with an H pipe. You can hear the sound difference. It's very distinct. I think I want to do some sound testing on my Monte Carlo, put some boom tubes on the V band so I can go back and forth between the boom tube and the raw pipe. Uh, that's what she said. I want to science this out for myself in person because I just think this is super interesting. And there is so much more that goes into this that I have not talked about. We're just scratching the surface on the story behind the X pipe, the boom tubes, the NASCAR exhaust technology, how it transfers to a car that you might have, what you can do to bring that out, what you shouldn't do, what helps, what doesn't help, all kinds of stuff. These, um, Dr. Gas is a wealth of information, super awesome dude. I am super pumped to be doing stuff with them because literally, you know, my entire life, the coolest sounding car out there was a freaking NASCAR and there wasn't anything like firing up the TV and hearing those cars go by at the, you know, that turn three camera. Now the races I went to did not run this X pipe system. So I've never actually heard this in person. I really want to though, it's gonna happen. And just to, you know, clarify, air is air, engines are engines. It doesn't matter if you freaking blow into a trombone and then you hand it to a buddy and he blows into the trombone too. You're hitting the same note, it's gonna make the same sound. If the engine is of a similar displacement, 
of a similar horsepower level at a similar RPM, it's going to sound very, very similar because the, the trumpet you're playing out of is what dictates that sound. Firing order plays a role in that too. It's very interesting. LS engines do not have the same firing order as the old school small blocks. But the small block Fords did. And if you want to get creative and go back and look at some uh, qualifying videos, like watch Dale Jarrett's car qualify and then go watch Dale Earnhardt's car qualify. They sound different. And that's because of the firing order. It makes a difference, but it's... I don't know. That might be something I mess with too. I think it would be pretty cool... Because, you know, they do the 4.7 and the 2.3 firing order swap on, like, an old small block to bring it to, like, the LS firing order. Well, what if you went backwards? What if you put a 4.7, 2.3 swap cam in an LS motor and just plugged in the coils opposite ways to make it work? It'd be worse, but would it sound different? I don't know. That might be a worthwhile experiment if we can make it work. What do you think? Leave a comment, let me know what you thought, if you thought this was interesting, if you learned something new, if you already knew this, if you have anything to add to it. I know I've received a lot of useful information from guys in comments who have ties to this stuff. It's pretty crazy how the internet works like that. Man, if you made it this far, you better hit that subscribe button because if you made it this far, I know deep down you're an exhaust nerd too and you're gonna love it here. I'm glad you're here. I love geeking out on this stuff but it's not as fun if the people who are involved in watching are not as appreciative of it. You know, like to some people, just a V8 to V8. And that's not how we roll here. The sound is like the most important part of a car besides the way it looks, because if it doesn't sound cool, then you know, what the heck are you doing it for? You might as well have a V6. I said what I said, V6s sound like garbage. Make sure you do all that fun stuff. Check out my website, stapletonautoworks.com for um, shirts don't have hoodies yet but i will and you know help them put diesel in the tank so go hit that subscribe button check out the website pet your dog go make some cool noises drink lots of water all that stuff we'll see you on the next one